Helen Shaver is a 73-year-old woman producing very strong work on The Penguin as director. Hopefully she gets the chance to direct a feature film because she delivered above average work last week and really upped her game this week with Homecoming. A genuinely exciting episode which finally, finally gives Oz something substantial to do as he seeks to lay real claim to Gotham's underworld. Every episode prior to this, while in some respects necessary for setup, was stuffed full of filler and fetch quest nonsense, but finally moves are being made and it's very fun to watch. I'm still not going to call it the greatest TV show of 2024 or anything silly like that. It's entertaining and well-made, but not a work of genius, and I think it's best to state that up front. The hype is still too much. But boy oh boy is Homecoming everything I wanted in a show about the Penguin. Oz gets a crew together, separate from the Falcones. Oz murders opponents in a calculated, rather than rash manner. Oz begins to embrace the darkness rotting away in his soul. Oz establishes a base of operations from which he can build his empire. Oz Cobb, the Penguin, finally does something besides cleaning up his mess from the start of the season. And it's great fun to watch. Now I'm going to go out on a limb and assume you've all seen episode 5, so I'll skip the synopsis. It's easily the worst part of any YouTube review anyway. So be gone, foul demon! Let's talk about Helen Shaver, a Canadian goddess, I've no doubt. Now if you saw my review on The Office Australia, then you might have thought to yourself, wow, Mr. Aussie Critic doesn't like women. And that's not true at all. Yes, I don't think they're funny. But no, I don't think they're useless. Helen Shaver, a woman, can direct, and she has gone two for two on The Penguin with Sentani and Homecoming. Here we see a working director who has cut their teeth on TV shows since the 90s, swing for the fences, and display a more than average capacity. Now maybe Schaefer was blessed with good scripts, and I do have notes on her work, but when you've got scenes that are done in one mature long take, action that is visceral, and emotional moments that speak volumes without a line of dialogue, well then you've got good direction. This chick is running rings around Craig Zobel and absolutely deserves more opportunities. The fact that she's 73 years old makes for a case of better late than never and well-earned praise. Let's start off with a canted angle during Oz's argument with his kinda sorta girlfriend Eve. As an essential pillar of humanity in Oz's life, Eve's rejection and refusal to race off into the unknown with him thoroughly shatters a piece of his soul. And what does Shaver do? She gets the camera down low, cans it, and holds on Oz's face to allow Farrell to convey the seismic shift in his persona. That's good, solid direction. No dialogue was required, and the choice of image perfectly complements what the character is going through. That shot is the right choice, and it's not even my favorite from the episode. Next, we have the attack on Taj Maroney. Another longish take with Taj in the center of the frame while the background is out of focus. Cobb and his gang enter the tattoo parlor and start killing people while Taj is unawares. As the characters move from the background to the foreground, they step into focus and surprise Taj. Now I would have preferred deep focus as it could allow us to see the killings, but that's a minor quibble because the choice was good. It made the action sequence unique as opposed to a mindless bloodbath. Finally, my favorite scene in the episode is when Oz hugs his mother and they talk in the third act. Again, we have a long take, this one the longest in the episode, as Shaver holds the camera on these two and lets them enthrall us with their talent. I didn't like how Schaefer cut so frequently from Miliotti during her big third act speech in Sentani, as I think she's a good enough actress to carry the scene on her own. Fortunately here, Schaefer displays mature direction and doesn't feel the need to cut between faces to make the scene dynamic. Remember, every cut should progress the story, and where characters are speaking, you're often best served by putting them in frame and letting the actors go back and forth without intervention. If nothing else, you can jiggle the camera a little bit or push in to give some motion, but it's really not necessary. This is especially the case if the characters are close, like mother and son, because isolating people in separate frames is just another way of saying they don't have intimacy. That's not the case here, and so it works well. These three sequences are all very solid to downright good, and Schaefer absolutely deserves praise for her work. Now on to the writing. My big complaint about The Penguin, for anyone who hasn't seen previous episodes, were that they had filler episodes where the characters go on meaningless quests and the story deviates away from The Penguin in a bait and switch which makes Sophia Falcone the lead. 
I have no issue with Sophia's role as an antagonist, but I do take issue with her becoming an anti-hero who was written to usurp the Penguin in his own TV show. If you want her to be the lead, write a show for her. Don't try to trick the audience. Fortunately in Homecoming, everything is balanced so that Oz actually does something substantial and Sophia is well placed to be his enemy and a ruthless opponent at that. Oz, as I mentioned, builds his own crew, gets a base of operations, runs a play to steal the bliss mushrooms, slaughters those who pose a threat to him. Everything he does is more than just the bombastic idiocy of a disgruntled and thoughtless gangster. And it was great fun to watch. I repeat, great fun. We finally got the Penguin in the Penguin show doing criminal shit that will see him build an empire worthy of the Batman's attention. At long fucking last. Cause let's be real, four hours of TV has come and gone, and that's a lot of time to give a show before it really clicks into place. But it was worth it, and will be especially good fun if they keep this same energy up in future episodes. No more backstory BS, no filler where a character must jump through hoops to achieve little of substance. And no, please God, no nonsense where we're supposed to feel like the bad guys are really misunderstood. Just give us evil people doing evil shit in pursuit of their evil agenda. It's that simple, guys. And this episode gave us that, and it was fantastic entertainment. That's all I've got to say about that. The Penguin episode 5 was a big winner in my book because it delivered on the promise inherent to a show about the Penguin. Keep up the good work and let's hope the fun continues next week. Thanks for watching. I got ambition. I can help you. Hey! Feel alive, Vic, huh? <laughs> Feel a heart beating? This city is meant to be yours, sweetheart. What are you gonna do to get it?